I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I hope that people don't just listen to this, but they also go and watch you somewhere because you're so beautiful. Oh my god! Like to listen is like not really getting the whole deal. She, you're here's the thing with you. Your enthusiasm is totally infectious, and I think that's why looking at you is like it's kind of medicine because you're oh always like this. Kathy, you're so sweet. No, it's nice to do a podcast interview with someone who's like on my energetic level, you know, because I usually come in and I'm like apologizing to people. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm a lot right now. <laughs> so this no, is really you're the nice. best. And you're so sweet. But yeah, Nicole, you are really like a lightning rod for aliveness. Like I feel like you're so always like, let's do this. Glass is half full. You're an amazing right. mom. You're so good at helping other women to like step in, like step trying. into it. <laughs> so I want to know before we go into all the things and, and, and you have so many good things to say all the time that really help us gain clarity and strength and insight. But before we go there, I think people should know your own transformation journey. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's quite the journey. So, um, I started off working in corporate America, I think like a lot of people, and I realized that I had a lot of great skills that were helping my company make a ton of money. And I actually liked the work I was doing. This wasn't one of those situations where it's like, I hate where I am every day. Get me out of this cube. Aside from the fact that my energy is so not cubicle energy. No, it's, like not. I, it's not at all. <laughs> like I actually think that my quitting my job was probably better for the, my coworkers. <laughs> so they didn't have to meet me every day because I'm so much that way. But, um, you know, I was doing the corporate thing and essentially I worked in business development and sales. So I really helped, you know, scale the company from 2 million to 200 million. And I loved oh it. Oh my God. I loved it. It was great. It's great work. But I realized that, you know, this job worked. It fed my family, but it didn't really feed my soul. You know, I knew I was meant to do something more. And I felt like it strategically had more to do with who I was working for more than it was what I was doing. So I shifted, you know, I started building a place for me to go. So I went online. I, um, I started a blog about my hair. I mean, I really was <laughs> dabbling in a lot of different places just to kind of see what worked. And um, before you knew it, things started connecting and I quit my job. It's so, it's so cool. And it's amazing how you have, you make it seem so simple. You're like, I grew the company from two to 200 million. Then I started my own thing. And now you've made so much happen for yourself. Right. What's the ingredient sure, that sure. has allowed that to just happen and make it looks easy, but clearly- it it's not, it's not easy. And I think that I never want to. And one of the things I always try to share online is that nothing happens overnight. My business is a crock pot business. It's not a microwave business. So, you know, when I quit my job and I did that live online in front of 10,000 people, I basically burnt the bridge behind me. So I was like, you know what, this thing has to work. Oh my God. <laughs> so when I did that and decided to branch into, you know, really diving deep on consulting and providing these services to entrepreneurs who need them every day. Um, my business scaled very quickly. And the biggest thing is consistency. I can honestly tell you that it has been probably 12 years and I have not gone a single day without posting some sort of social media content in 12 years without fail. So some days it's a whole live broadcast. Some days it's two or three live broadcasts. Some days it's just a tweet or a post, but not a day goes by where I don't tell people where my business is and how they can work with me. It's amazing. And for those of you who didn't know the full story, when she <laughs> said she quit her job live, that was on Periscope in front of thousands of people. Yeah, it was a big deal, but it wasn't as, it's funny. Cause whenever I say it, I always feel like I have to counter it with like, it wasn't as crazy as it sounds, you know, because I had been getting clients and working consistently and I truly was hiring myself. I was put into a position where it was like, I can't keep going to work because my business is thriving. I have clients waiting for me. I need my hours back. So the only reason I quit live in front of people is to show people, look, you can do this and not spontaneously combust, you know, okay. like it's possible to quit your job and not lose it all. <laughs> so before we even get into some of the, the, I mean, what's happened since then is, is just really a marvel to behold. <laughs> But to start even there, 10,000 people watching you, yeah. one of the things that you are so good at is engaging with other human beings. 
you are so good at going right to the heart of it. And I think that what people don't get is they're always looking at the vanity metrics. Like I want a million followers, 20 million. It's like, what about having that depth with your audience? Oh, you nailed it. How do you do that? How have you done that? Well, you nailed it. And you know, what's great. And I'm excited for everyone who listens to your podcast, because these are the types of questions that no one ever asked me. So like Kathy, like you so, so get it. And I mean, I'm telling you that that is the core of it. People ask me about the vanity metrics. How'd you build a followership and how'd you make your first million? And the truth is the answer is the same. I did it by treating social media at its original purpose, which is to connect with people and be social. So every time I log on, every time I write an email, every time I answer a DM, I remember that there's another person on the other side of the camera and I talk to them as if they're in the room next to me. And Mm -hmm. I seek out to make friends and change lives that way. Anything else that happens in between that is a wonderful circumstance. But at the end of the day, if they're still my friend, well, that's what really matters. It's even a policy that we extend to the way that we deal people with in our business. Cause I have a team of 20 and a headquarters in Atlanta now and all that jazz. And whenever people even email in for something like, oh, you know, I need a refund or I need to figure something out or something's going on with my family. We're asking, Hey, do we need to send flowers? How can we support you? Uh, so you know, sweet. and, and we're not hassling you about mm-hmm. a refund because even if we're refunding you on a course, we still want to be your friend. We want you to watch the TV show. We want you to be on social. We want you to still tune in and keep us up to date on what's going on with your life. And I think that social media with all the automation has forced some of people to think that they need to automate relationships and we shouldn't automate systems, not relationships. That's so clarifying. And it's so sweet that I've never heard anyone say, can we, where can we send flowers? Or, I mean, just, yeah. Treating people like humans. People. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. When Howard Schultz was here, I was really blown away that he said that at any Starbucks meeting, the seat next to him is always a customer. Mm -hmm. He's like, as soon as I lose that seat. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, it's like, no wonder this business is so giant, right? So speaking of business, you are literally a Jedi. You are a Jedi. And for so many people, you have, you have taught them not the fluff, not the hype because Mm. you're so real, how to really build a business. And, and this is what really took off for you. It's become a million dollar personal development, business development. You help people Mm. through courses, through your podcast, through so many things. What do you say to someone who wants to build a business and can't even the first, the first thing we know about our audience is they don't even know how to choose a thing. They're so afraid to choose. Sure. Sure. They're multi-passionate. And I think the first thing I want to do is stop treating that like that's a bad thing. I haven't met an entrepreneur to this day that has only ever had one business. So the mere fact that you have a lot of ideas just shows that you're probably better suited for entrepreneurship than you know. And the second thing I tell them is it's actually a lot simpler than you think that we're, you're often overthinking because you're yeah. so invested. And the reality is that if you really just focus on the basics of how you can serve, which is really simple. So like I always love to use the example of the mom who's saying to herself, I'm so busy. I don't know how I can make money. I'm just a mom. Well, being a mom means that you're an organizer, a time manager, a virtual assistant, a strategist, a chef, a driver. You've got a lot of skills. It's just about how to package those skills and deliver them to people. So I often will tell that mom, hey, you know, how many moms on your cul-de-sac need help making lunches? Go around and drop a slip. Keep it contactless, right? (laughs) In their little you know, order slip around where they can go ahead and say, Hey, this week we're doing PBJs head over to that Costco, go ahead and make some sandwiches and drop them up at the door. You can be the lunch lady for your subdivision. The margins on that are fantastic. It'll cost you $300 in groceries and you'll make 700 bucks in profit. And it's one of those things that we often lose sight of. We think that our business needs to be something big and grand and transformational when all that Steve Jobs did was take the buttons off of phones. Phones already existed. So lean in on that. It's all about the basics. Listening to you talk is like listening to music or watching (laughs) Serena, just like hit balls. You're just like, oh, that's the question. Boom. And the way you answer, I love that example. It's like gonna cost you 300 bucks to make a $700 profit. Get those PB and J's. It's so good. Now here's the thing is I come to find out 88% of our audience is female. I don't know if this is a male thing, but I know it's in my audience, which is shame around Mm -hmm. charging for anything. 
Totally. There is so much of a sabotage. As soon as I would possibly ask someone to pay me for something, mm -hmm. Nicole, forget it. I'm running the other way. I'm, I'm out. How do yeah. we overcome that? Well, it's such a mindset thing because people think that humility goes along with, uh, you know, poverty, <laughs> that you need to not make money in order to be humble and truly appreciate your craft. And I completely disagree. I'm actually a Christian, which is something I talk about all the time, I know. you know, but with my faith, you know, one of my beliefs, and I think anyone can relate to this is God wants me to be in my purpose all the time, yep. right? Like he gave me a gift. We all have our gifts specifically so that we can use those to help people all the time. So if that's the case, don't you think that the world wants to fund your opportunity to be in that purpose all the time? I can't serve people with these great ideas and help them pay their school fees and buy that house and fix that roof and go to that summer camp if I'm spending any of my time doing things I shouldn't be doing, like filing reports for my boss or sorting out a Dropbox for someone oh, else. True. So I have to charge. It isn't even optional. I have to charge so that I can be where I'm supposed to be to serve the way I'm supposed to serve. That's so beautiful. I love it. And my <laughs> Kathy, I love you. Kathy, I literally need you to just record like a voice memo of affirmations. Girl, you are pretty. You are smart. Nicole, you know everybody amazing. Says this <laughs> everybody says yeah. this to you. I'm sure of it. I'm, I'm no. surprised. That are you like kidding me? My kids are like, mom, what's for dinner? Like <laughs> that. That's a whole other volume. You might be verified, but don't think that you're somebody. That's my 18 year old. Don't let that blue check mark go to your head, mom. <laughs> That's what I get. <laughs> I totally get that too. I have three kids. We understand. Oh, you understand for my, sure. What you just said is so beautiful. And my friend, Jamie Kern Lima said to me the other day, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies, he qualifies the, the called. called. And yes. I love it so much. Yes. And I think that one of the things that goes along with the humility, Nicole, is this idea of God, it's everywhere. Imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. where part of the reason I don't want you to pay me is because you could get this from someone better. Mm -hmm. I'm a fraud. I'm not good at this. Mm -hmm. I'm not qualified. I'm not certified. I'm not as good as the person down the street. I'm only new at mm -hmm. making florals. I'm what do you tell those people? Because this is a problem. Well, one of the things that I know is that money's not going to keep that situation from occurring. So what I do know is that anyone I've ever worked with, any mom or girlfriend or sister or friend who's leaning into starting a business, but is afraid that they'll let people down or they'll figure out that they're a fraud because of that thing inside them. I try to remind them, when have you ever not shown up a hundred percent? When have you ever taken something on, whether it was free or as a hobby, a birthday party, a baby shower, you know, working for the PTA board and not given more than was asked of you? That is your nature. That's who you are. You give your all, even if you're not getting paid. So what makes you think you're just going to phone it in once you get a check? That's just a commitment fee. Don't think about it as a, a payment for a service. Think of it as a commitment for both you and for that person to seeing that transformation through. So get paid because you deserve it. I love that. And it, that's really, really, I've never actually heard anyone say that, but it's true. When have you ever like not shown up? That's what mm -hmm. we do, right? We Whether do the, all the time. The church asks you to volunteer for something and mm -hmm. your husband's like, you haven't slept in 72 hours. That's what we most and of us And you just stay do. up late. I mean, staying up late, making Halloween costumes, staying up late, making the brownies. Cause the kids told you at the last minute that right. you're on it for the brownies. I mean, we are shower uppers. That's what we do. And yeah. if you think that a check or, or a fee is on the line, what makes you think you're going to show up any less? So yeah, that's so true. It. Mm -hmm. uh, the last thing about the money piece, which is really, it's, it's very prevalent is, is scarcity mindset where people believe that everybody is in a state of scarcity, that nobody's like, mm -hmm. there's no clients, there's no money out there. And I'd like to hear your take on this because you've created so much wealth, not just for yourself and your family, mm -hmm. but for so many other people through teaching them how to do it. Yep. But you didn't grow up in the same place that not. you're in now. Mm -hmm. So how did you begin to start to see more of an expansive abundance world when you were not necessarily living in that as a kid? Well, the big thing for me has always been that I have no problem meeting and solving problems. Like I like it, you know, so I don't turn away from problems. I just see them as something that needs to be solved. And that shift in mindset, rather than thinking that if something bad happens or if something's difficult or challenging, it just is the way it is. You know, that shift was everything for me. Growing up, I rode around with my dad, you know, through DC, you know, and he's a cab driver and he would point at buildings and say, look, you can clean one or you can get your name on one, you know, and that's a stark 
characteristic. There's a lot of things in between, you know, but it really did kind of put the polarization into effect for me where I was like, no, like I want my name on a building if these are my choices, you know, and you get older and you realize there's a lot more options, but African parents, they're kind of very firm like that, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, I think that that's truly the, the perspective I would want someone to take into it when it comes to, you know, recognize that it's not scarce. The only thing that's scarce is you and your story. You're the only thing that's rare. And the thing that scares me more than anything else else would be leaving this earth without using the story I've been given to change people's lives that are still suffering in what I've been delivered from. So I'm in a situation where I've been delivered from poverty, where I've been delivered from a life of hardship, where I've been delivered from a life where I felt like I was not working every day in towards my legacy. And the fact that I have those answers now, if I were to leave with it, it's the most selfish thing I can do. So I chase giving those answers to people every single day. Mm. That's so beautiful. And I want to know what you have to say about this other piece, because so often people are asking me, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And not often enough asking me, who do I be? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how do I be? And what I find having met, you know, myself in certain moments and having talked to so many other successful people is so much of the what creates the magic or the opportunity is in the rising. It's the inner work. It's the showing up in that vibration that then yeah. resonates with a like vibration. And you, you are like a lighthouse. Like oh people, my gosh, thank you, you are, you're such a clear vessel. There's no, um, there's not a lot of matter to you, meaning ego or, mm -hmm things that would keep you in a state of fear or, right. or separate you from other human beings. Thank it's you. like this clear channel. Mm -hmm. What do you, how do you articulate that inner aspect to people who mm -hmm. are still thinking that their funnel is going to make or break their business? <laughs> right. I think that one thing that I always try to say is that business is dynamic and we always have this uh, final perspective that we bring into it when we're working with people that, oh, I just need a funnel or, oh, I just need this many followers, or, oh, I just need my podcast to hit these numbers. Instead of realizing that life is very fluid and that, you know, it's what people mean when they say it's the journey. So in order to really love the work you're doing and feel like you're pursuing something that's worthy, you have to lean into the dynamic fluidity of building a business and knowing that, you know, some days will be highs and some days will be lows. And that it all only matters that in each moment when you're interacting with someone that you're just giving your best. So, you know, in terms of me shelving the ego and showing up the hot mess, if that's what I am that day, that's what that's about. Because to the person that shows up in that moment to receive what I have to offer, it's going to be enough. And mm -hmm. that's the thing that's actually going to continue to feed your business for years and years to come. Mm -hmm. Recognize that you just have to show up. And that's honestly what attracted me to you is you do these videos where you're just sitting there, your hair is hanging up, out <laughs> on the stairs with your right. kids, having these real conversations. They're mm -hmm. saying funny stuff and you're right. just like having, and I'm like, wow, she's, she's willing to show up without mm -hmm. it being curated, without right. the lighting being right. right. Do you have any examples in your life of synchronicity that you could never have planned where you saw God, you saw the universe, you saw the world meet you with an opportunity because you showed up and didn't figure out the how, but you just showed up in your purpose. Oh my gosh. You're going to make me cry. Cause it's just like, it's such a, it's a thing. First of all, I'm blessed because I've had a lot of those moments, you know, so I'm really grateful for, for that every day. But the biggest moment in my life was actually, and it's going to be, you know, shown on the TV show, but it was I when know. I met my daughters, you know, it was when I met my girls, I uh, was on date night with my husband and it was late and we were planning on getting dessert on the way home. And we pulled over because I saw kind of a little hopping thing in the corner. And it was actually my daughter panhandling with her biological mom at the time. And I wasn't supposed to be there. Wasn't supposed to be on that corner. It was 10 o'clock at night in October in Baltimore. And we pulled over and, you know, I just looked in her face and I just, I just knew 
You know, I just knew that I was, I needed to help with whatever the next right thing was. And you want to talk about synchronicity. I mean, that was what my life has been with my three girls, just doing the next right thing. And I never thought when I took in a three-year-old an 11-year-old and a 14-year-old that I would you know, five years later, be mom to a nine-year-old, an 18-year-old and a 21-year-old, you know, but here I am and it has highs and lows because parenting and I've got teenagers and a 21-year-old, you know, but every single moment is a constant living, breathing, walking reminder of how God shows up. And all you have to do is just open your eyes and be willing to say yes and look for the opportunities because they are around you. My kids are a walking, living, breathing example of resilience that I get to have every day. I couldn't put a price on that. I can't, I can't ever make excuses because they exist and they're here, you know? So um, the show covers a lot of what our journey is like. And, and it talks about the funny moments of me figuring out parenting, you know, all three at one time. But um, it's also a beautiful example of what it looks like to see love happen in the most unexpected way. Oh my God. So for those of you who haven't yet heard, the show is coming out February 25th. It's called She's the Boss. It's going to be yes. on USA Network. And the story, it, it nobody could have sat down and have written such a beautiful story. And it happens to be true. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of what Bob Goff said when he was here. And he said, it's, it's amazing how God will rain down the most incredible opportunities when you just put up your hand and say, I'm available. Yes. Yes. Like, like I'm open. Like, okay. Like one of my simplest prayers is the one that I do when I wake up, when I say like, please God, just let me see. Like, I know you're here. I know you're doing things. Just let me see. And I didn't start doing that until after I got my kids, because once I got my kids, I realized that's all I saw them, you know, and that, and look at where I am now, you know, and then my other prayer is before I get on stage or before I do a podcast with Kathy Heller, or, you know, before I, you know, have an opportunity to be filming, you know, I say, thank you, God, for choosing me you know, because he, I got chosen for the opportunity first by him and then by whomever else kind of came into play. And I just hope that whatever I do honors the opportunities in front of me. And when you take it in small pieces like that, life doesn't actually seem so big after all. It's really poetry. It's really, <laughs> you Kathy, are, I love you. No, you make you, me feel so shiny. Like I'm like, literally like, you don't understand. Like I tell my kids, like half the time I'm like, please go do the dishes, go do this. And they're just like, okay, mom, are you doing your motivational thing again? I'm like, no, I'm asking you to do the dishes. So like, <laughs> I appreciate you. Kathy. The thing yeah. is, Nicole, you know, how you said, please, God, let me see. Yeah. I don't know if I always can see what I'm supposed to see. And mm -hmm. that is my prayer whenever I remember to say that prayer. Yeah. Beautiful one. But what I do see is I can hold up a mirror for who is ever in front of me. Mm -hmm. That's my thing. Every single thing I'm reflecting to you is, is literally the most genuine. You are so, you're so awesome. Thank you. And the thing is, this makes sense because you are rich in a way that most people never taste mm -hmm. your life is a mission. Yeah. It is. It's not about the money. Money's just a tool. So that's why I always joke with my team and my family, like, look, I just want to collect it so I can put it where it's supposed to go, exactly. you know, and I want to put it into charity. One of my favorite organizations here in Atlanta is called City of Refuge, and they've been around for 20 years. And I mean, they help, you know, women who are in sex trafficking, they provide housing, education, all these things. And, you know, I am like, what do you guys need this month? We need to redo the bathrooms. I will be right back. You know, and my job is to go get that money to help get that done, you know, and, and that's what life is about. You know, life is about collecting these funds and using your gifts so that you can actually help others and push the side of good. You know, that's, that's where we are as we're pushing the collective good. So it's exciting. I'm, I consider myself blessed every day to get to do this, like the TV show, serving people through my business, like talking to you, like, this is just, what is my life even? Like, I can't even, it's just incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> and it's all because you are a magnet for it. Oh, you geez. are a magnet. No, you that, but that's the truth. We're all a right. magnet for whatever our life that's is. True. It's and true. The highest state of receivership is gratitude. Mm -hmm. yes. So when you walk through life saying, God, thank you for this sunset. Everything. Thank you for the grass. Thank you for yes. my child. Thank you for my yes. peanut butter and jelly. He's like, look how much she's doing with that. Let's give Here her some go. more. There you go. You're so right about right? that. That's true. Thank you, God, for my eyebrows. Thank you for my clear skin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
all the things, <laughs> all the, th all the things. And there's so many in your world. And what I love about it is anything you have, even if it's just your energy, you just want to give it away. That's what wholeness is. And that's mm -hmm. when you're in a state. See, this is the thing, everybody, <laughs> When people are feeling down, mm -hmm. they're in a state of scarcity. So they're yes. saying, I'm lacking love. I'm lacking mm -hmm. attention. I'm lacking money. I'm lacking being seen. When you're in that place, you just are really showing the world. You're saying to like the universe, I don't feel worthy of more mm -hmm. than this. Mm -hmm. So you just keep seeing that you see evidence yes. of what you look for, right? Yes, you, that's right. You're always vibrating in a place of like, oh, it's so awesome. I'm so blessed. Mm -hmm. I'm so lucky. So yes. what happens? More Good things, things happen. Absolutely. Please, God, let me see. Because the truth is he's out there working for someone, right? Your worst day is somebody's best day. You know what I mean? So no matter what, there's good happening. The question is, are your eyes open to see it? You know, are your eyes open to see it? Are you here to receive it? So if there's anything, it's just, please, God, let me see these opportunities around me because I know they exist. And the more you keep saying, I know they exist, the more they keep showing up. It's absolutely bananas. <laughs> it is bananas. And what's also bananas in the best way is that you do have to three daughters. And I feel like what's so important right now that I'm noticing is that she is the boss. Like what's <laughs> happened, what's happened, especially during COVID is like mm -hmm. all the ways that we thought in the patriarchal society yeah. that in order to earn a buck, you're either a guy or mm -hmm. you get to do it on a guy's terms, right? That's you put right. on a pantsuit, you, you, you put your kids in daycare, then That's you go right. off to an office. You're showing your daughters like, Hey guys, guess what? you get to make this money and you get yes. to do it in a state of purpose. You get to do it yes. in a state of grace and you're helping yes. all these women see that as a possibility. This is so important. Say a little bit about what you see for women and how we can rise and stop apologizing and start to step into it without feeling like we're, we're having to do it a, a way that actually isn't our way. Authentic to us. Right. right. No. And I, I, we're coming up on Women's History Month, right? You know, and so it's something at the forefront of my mind with our my show coming out. You know, she's the boss is all about showing both sides because I think that we've all gotten caught up in the social media perfect flatly, right? You know, it's all yeah. about the glitter toss. It's all about the perfect hair. It's all about I don't want to go, you know, live on camera if I'm not this weight. You know, all these things that are really not reflections of our gift. They're just reflections of expectations. From from society. So what's awesome about She's the Boss is that on our show, you get to see that I am actually a true and proper hot mess. Like, I mean, I, I lean into my hot me messness all day. So I can be a boss in the office and, you know, run these amazing million dollar deals and help with these incredible launches and work with New York Times bestselling authors, and then turn around and go home and burn dinner, you know, and this is what it looks like. And in showing both sides of that, one, we get a good laugh because who doesn't need that right now. But the other side of it is you can see that, look, I'm still successful, even with those mistakes, even with those flaws, even with those imperfections, because I am learning every single day. And each episode really does center around a core lesson, whether it's learning to give my kids more breathing room, learning to let my husband express himself the way he is, or learning not to trust my crazy assistant, Eddie, with my car keys. <laughs> no matter what it is, I'm absolutely learning a lesson. And that's really what makes each of us bosses is that we're out here to improve ourselves every single day. That's so, so true. And what was that like for you? Because you are, <laughs> you are a Christian and you are a person mm -hmm. who has like an incredible amount of integrity. So then to bring cameras into your life, right. And not want it to go Kardashian, not want right, it. To, right. How did you, how did you go through that process and keep feeling like you were being in integrity with yourself? So it's tough. I mean, I will honestly say that you always have to balance out the expectations of sort of the, the world of entertainment, right? Hollywood with, you know, your own integrity, but what's great. And I hope that anyone who's ever thought of pursuing, um, influencer life or TV or, or anything like that, remember, 
remember is this, making your own money really gives you a lot of flexibility. So I did not go into this experience without a strong sense of self. So I know that some people will see what they see on TV and maybe not understand it or maybe be curious, you know, or, you know, have a perspective around it that I didn't anticipate, but it won't change what I think about myself. Yeah. And overwhelmingly people will love it and they will be inspired and they will find common ground and they will relate and they will laugh their pants off. And that is what really mattered. And that's what I held at the forefront as I did this experience. I said, I want to make sure that whatever hits the air is something that no matter how it's received, I'm still proud of it because it's the truth. Yeah. And that is truly what I am super excited about with this project is I know that it's just giving a light to this world. And I mean, Kathy, like, it, I think it helps legitimize this world too. You know, how many online entrepreneurs do you see with TV shows? You know, how many Very women few. entrepreneurs are you seeing as a lead on a TV show? It's rare. And I can't you, even think, of I any. can't even think of any right now, you know? And um, however, if anyone's listening and thinks of one, tweet me, cause I'm just like, I don't even really think I know any. So, you know, it's like, you know, it's just so rare. And I think it's just going to be incredible, you know, to be able to see kind of the future on the big screen, you know, see what it looks like. There's a lot of us out there doing it big and doing it digitally without compromising our values, integrities, or family. And, and I get to kind of pave the way of waving the banner saying, Hey, follow me. And like, you know, there's more of us, you know, it's so, it's so amazing awesome. because you're literally pioneering this. I, right before we got on, I was having a conversation with a couple of people, I already had a conversation with a couple of networks who now want to have these business driven mm -hmm. shows about women yes. who are doing side hustles, who then yes. figure out how to work from their pajamas, like That's in front right. of their laptops. And you're it, Nicole, like <laughs> all these people are saying it's never been done. It's never, and it's like, um, I don't it's think it's you know, done right now. Hello. Coming out February 25th. <laughs> yes. Did you always know that you wanted a TV show? How did this come about? Did you pitch it or did they come to you? Well, they came to me, which I thought was a really incredible opportunity. You know, I just never in a million years would expect it, but you know, thank you God for letting me see. Right. But, uh, yeah, no, it wasn't something I always wanted, but what I've always wanted to do is reach as many people as possible. Yeah. My husband is such a, um, he lifts me so much. And one of the things he always says to me is Nicole, I've seen your impact in rooms of 30. I've seen your impact in rooms of 300. I can only imagine if we can get you in front of more people, what you can do. You just need more eyes. He said this to me when I was doing one-to-ones about curly hair products, you know, outside of beauty shows, he was like, look, I can see what you can do. We just need to get you more eyes, you know? And so I, that's why I've shown up on social media consistently for 12 years. I feel like I've always had a show. People have been on this journey. People have interacted with me in real way. And hopefully this will be an opportunity to go global and reach more people where they are so that they can realize there's a whole community of me and Kathy's out here in this world, just trying to improve things little by little and show you that your potential is so much more than what society has dictated for you. It's incredible. And mm -hmm. you, you're doing all these things at the same time. You're running the household, <laughs> running barely. <a> business. <laughs> well, Trying. that's the thing is like, I want to know what you think about that. Cause so many of our audience members are women with families mm -hmm. and they, they go back to this thing of like, I don't have enough time. Right. And I'm, I, I feel for them yeah. because I have three kids and I know there's a juggle, but I know that there's also something else at play. I'm curious mm -hmm. what your go-to response is when someone says, I don't have the time, but I wish yeah. I, I could, cause I'm not so fulfilled. Sure. I want more balance with more things I want to make, but how? Mm -hmm. What do you well, say? I love telling people that balance is categorically bogus. No matter what, you will have a ball on the floor, right? But some balls are glass and some balls are rubber. So you just, that's what you really need to get good at doing is recognizing if I drop this one, will it shatter? Or if I drop this one, will it bounce back and I'll get another shot at it? So that's where I really focus. And when it comes to family, family for me is a glass ball. I'll never drop it because I want to make sure that I'm always able to put them first. I care about my family. So it's about when I'm with them, giving them my all. Now, does it mean I'm with them 24 seven? Absolutely not. I'm actually a better mom if I'm not there. I'm not the primary parent, you know? So I do make dinner because my kids like my cooking and I do make all of the events and I'm cheering from the sideline. And each of my kids has a slip where it's like, I will come into just to your school and argue with your teacher once. So decide when you want to use your slip. You know what I mean? So I am definitely that mom, you know, but I also recognize that I'm not the best mom to go to every doctor's appointment and I'm not the the best mom 
mom to do wake up in the morning and breakfast. You know, these are things where I lean on my partner for that support. <laughs> and then, and I forgive myself. This is the second part of it. I grant myself grace. So when I'm not there, I'm not beating myself up about not being there. I'm knowing that in being away, I'm actually creating an environment that allows them to thrive when I'm not there. Because when I'm not there, they've got an assistant who's helping them with whatever they need. They have all the resources, funds, experiences, you name it. And I was able to acquire that for them by not being there. So it's granting myself grace and knowing I'm doing the best I can. And it's also recognizing that a ball's going to drop. Just make sure that it's rubber and not glass. Mm, that's so beautiful. And part of what you just said leads me to what I think is the biggest poison that everyone is drinking, which is shame. Like when it comes down to it, mm -hmm. I think what gets in, gets us in trouble as humans is when we feel shame and we, yes. we, we want to hide something or mm -hmm. we, we, we do not give ourselves grace. And mm -hmm. how does that help our kids? If we're walking not around feeling all. guilty, I know for me, it's a struggle to get a workout in. Cause I think I'd have to leave the house and then yep. my four-year-old and seven-year-old won't have me around. And mm -hmm. What do you think about the parts of us? Cause there are parts of all of us that we would rather hide that we are not proud of, mm -hmm. but what do you think about shame? And what do you think about loving ourselves as we are? I found at least that, you know, on one end, it's okay to keep some stuff private. And I think the shame usually comes when we feel like we're supposed to be something different than what we are yeah. versus recognizing that what you are is just part of you. So yeah, you might feel like you want to work out all the time, but if you don't, if you can't make the space for that in this season, right? Because we also act like what we are right now is permanent forever, right? It's in this season, then understand that it's a, there's always another side to it. So the both sides, of that is that instead you're this incredible mom who's prioritizing your four and your seven-year-old and spending time with them in these unique moments when they're only four and seven for so long, you know, that's incredible. So, you know, the shame comes when we start saying that, is this something I should feel bad about? And we really need to ask ourselves, who told you that? Where was the first time that I thought to myself that this was where I was supposed to be? Because if that thought isn't original to you, and if it isn't reflective of where you are and what you're accomplishing right now, well, then you really don't have to choose to receive it. I reject thoughts all the time that I don't feel aligned with who I am today. Just because someone told me 10 years ago that um, I could never, that I talk too much and I would never make money if I wasn't more humble. Well, talking pays my bills now. <laughs> I'm talking on a podcast right now, you know? So it's one of those things where I, you know, every time it would come up and I would say, am I talking too much? I'd have to remember, is that my thought? Does that really serve me? Because if not, I choose not to receive it. And the hundred percent. That is so clarifying. Actually, I've been meditating like over the last year, a little bit more every day. And mm -hmm. I realized the other day that one thing about me that I'm just, it's not good or bad. I'm just noticing it is yeah. that I wake up with a lot of questions about, you know, is, am I in the right marriage? Am I not in the mm -hmm. right marriage? Even mm -hmm. though we've worked and he's great. My mm -hmm. parents are divorced mm -hmm. and had a horrible marriage. And mm -hmm. what I finally came to see is that that's just a part of me. Like it's just I'm, a part of I'm you. I'm always going to have those thoughts. Absolutely. And it's the, the problem is when I go, I shouldn't have that thought. Why did yes. I have that thought? Yes. What does it mean about my marriage that I had that thought? It's it doesn't like, mean anything. You're just thinking it's like, did I leave the oven on? <laughs> you know why? Cause I, I remember when I was right. little, my mom always used to say that on the phone. It's not because you're, you're bound to set your house on fire. <laughs> it's just a thought, you know, you're allowed to examine it. Absolutely. That's it. It's like, I've come to realize like, you know, and I also, I've moved so many times. I'm always moving. Part of mm -hmm. that is we, I grew up in a really violent house and mm -hmm. we kept moving. And then mm -hmm. I was with my mom who was a single parent and I I've always looking for home. And I said to my mm -hmm. friend, what's wrong with me that I keep moving. And she said, maybe that's your thing. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you'll learn to be, not be scared of being settled, but mm -hmm. either way, you don't have to judge yourself. This is part it just of your is. Stuff, right? Sometimes it, it just is. is absolutely. And it's amazing because the greatest thing that you're doing and anyone who follows this thought process is doing is examining the origin of our beliefs around ourselves. Because once you start realizing that you can write your own internal narrative right. and rewrite your own internal narrative, that changes everything. It's once we keep accepting whatever thought that occurs to us as being our own, that we really start leading our life 
life in a direction that isn't necessarily aligned with where we want to go. So, I mean, sure, you may not have stopped those thoughts, but now that you know, hey, I need to explore, is this really what I want to do? You're not letting it dictate how you treat people. So you don't say, oh, should I be in this marriage? Get up and like yell at your husband. No, you say like, is this something I want to own? And then you go forth with your day. And I think that is what is so incredible. And it's a it's a superpower that we all have that we just need to tap into. It's 100% true. You know, the crowning jewel of the human is that we have awareness That's of right. our thoughts, right? Where animals don't have mm -hmm. that cognitive ability. So we have it. We just don't apply we it. Don't and you said we live the past over and over because we live this old narrative without That's right looking at it and what you just said is like i could have just heard this moment instead of <laughs> listening to these meditation tapes for a year <laughs> you've like nailed it okay last question is yeah. you're so good at being yourself and i just see for so many women where in relationships on a podcast on our instagram in comments we abandon ourselves because yeah. we're codependent. We, yeah. we want other people to like us. So we mm -hmm. will set ourselves on fire, turn ourselves into oh, a yes. pretzel. Yes. How have you learned to walk in your path mm -hmm. and, and allow it to sometimes be uncomfortable if somebody yeah. else doesn't like it, because you're never going to be able to control that. You either yes. get to be yourself or you're going to be controlling that which is exhausting. Mm -hmm. And it is exhausting. I mean, as my social media presence has grown, I realized very quickly that I really want people to, to like the version of me that I am, you know, and I don't want to have to be um, always pressed and poised. It's why I don't always show up with makeup on. And sometimes I'm not wearing a bra and I have a bonnet on my head. And yeah, the reason why is because there's also that side of me, you know, even though in our mind, when we think of Beyonce, it conjures up images of fabulousness. The reality is, you know, there's also the Beyonce who has gas, you know, and, you know, doesn't have a wig on and is wearing sweatpants. We just don't see that person often, you know, and when you put someone on a pedestal, it's only further for them to fall. So it was really important to me to be candid about, you know, showing up as authentically as possible so that if nothing else, when people do criticize me or when they do have a, a disagreement, you know, with uh, what they see, I at least know that that disagreement is born of a place where they have discomfort, you know, that it's their informed perspective around what they think I am or what they wanted me to be rather than what I actually am. And it makes it a lot easier for me to heal. Even if it still hurts, it makes it a lot easier for me to heal and move forward. Nicole, you're my favorite, <laughs> favorite. <laughs> you're everybody's favorite person. As soon as they oh, meet I you, they're you, like, Kathy, all right, so you. you have a podcast. I do. It's so good. Thank you. Tell people real fast what you want people to get from your podcast. Yeah. So my podcast is the Nicole Walters podcast and it's, um, 15 to 20 minute chats, quick bite size, perfect for popping in a load of dishes in the dishwasher or driving quick to work. And it's just a chat like this, me and a girlfriend, you know, so if you, if you love chatting like this, you'll love the podcast too. Amazing. And tell us once again, where we can find you and where we can find the show and yes. anywhere else that we can follow along in your Beauty. Oh, you're the greatest, Kathy. You can find me all over the internet at Nicole Walters. And then of course, if you want to watch the show, which I'm sure you do, it premieres Thursday, February 25th on USA Network at 1030 PM Eastern time. And it's called She's the Boss. I'm already ready for season two. I'm like, let's oh, go. Thank you. Let's do it. Your Nicole. lips to God's ears. Oh, it's done. It's <laughs> literally you. like, I receive it. I'm going to be like, I had her on like, yes, Beyonce can scooch a little yes, good it's, mojo. It's coming up. It's coming I love up. It. I receive it. You're amazing. Thank God you, bless Kathy. you. You should Thank just you. continue to walk in your grace and you're going to be met with like the, the most incredible blessing. It's a, oh. I I've never said that to anybody on this show because it's just the truth with you. And I'm, you've literally scratched the surface and you've already climbed mountains that people have never even seen you've climbed. So I'm so excited to see what God does with your beautiful imprint. Oh, just keep going. May you, you just continue to be healthy me. and enjoy it. Oh, you just left me. Thank you for having me, Kathy. That was, I receive all of that. And I just can't wait to come back and tell you how you were right. <laughs> so yes! thank you. <laughs> all the things to you, Nicole, you're the best. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you.